Hello, this is Matt Round of the Wolf Eye Clinic. We're going to share with you today an example of deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. This is a transplantation technique that we use for some of our patients with keratoconus, some of our patients with deep stromal scars, and others with deeper stromal dystrophies. Most cornea surgeons who utilize this technique will probably tell you it's one of the most rewarding surgeries we do because of the great service it's providing to the patient. We begin the procedure with a stabilization ring fixed to the eye. We mark the center of the cornea and then use a vacuum tree fine to initiate a groove into the cornea. Prior to the procedure, we like to obtain pentacam images in addition to an obvious examination at the slit lamp as it gives us a sense of how thick the cornea is throughout its entire area. In this particular case, the patient had a corneal thickness that was at least 380 microns and above throughout. You can see us just expect, inspecting the groove at this point. I will sometimes remove the anterior cap at this point if the corneal thickness is at least 350 microns throughout its extent. If it's much thinner than this, we'll just leave the cap in place prior to performing the air dissection. We're using a crescent blade to facilitate this. And we're probably left with a bed in this case of about 150 microns. We've also found it very useful to use the instrument set designed by Dr. Fogla. And you'll see the first of the instruments here. This dissector functions very much like a spike. And you can see with gentle uh, wiggling of the instrument, we can advance it into the remaining stroma. We then follow this with the air dissector, which follows that same path. And that's being advanced at this point. This is hooked up to a cannula, and at this point, we'll generate the big bubble, which separates Decime's membrane from the overlying stroma that remains. At this point, the stroma that remains has bulged towards the operating microscope, and we know we have the big bubble and we see that large egress of fluid because the anterior chamber pressure is high. We place a peripheral air bubble in this case and you can see that bubble remains in the periphery also suggesting that Decime's membrane has moved posteriorly within the central cornea. We place a small amount of viscoelastic on the surface of the remaining stroma and we'll use a super sharp blade to enter the cavity. Notice the air bubble seems to vanish, but we all know that that is now moved to the center of the eye. We perform some additional dissection with viscoelastic and then use the triangular spatula to help us create the initial openings within the cavity. These scissors are also specially designed for this type of surgery. You'll see the posterior aspect of them lacks any sharpness, and this also creates safety. Again, Decime's membrane that remains is quite thin and delicate. We want to avoid any perforation at this point. We rinse the surface of the Decime's membrane of any viscoelastic. I do like to use Tripan Blue to facilitate removal of Decime's membrane so that we know Decime's has been removed from the donor tissue. Our typical suturing technique is with interrupted sutures. In this particular case, the opening uh, generated by the initial trephination was 8 millimeters. This particular cornea was punched at 8.25. And we do this so we generate some flattening of the cornea. This patient's keratometry values were in the upper 50s. 
And so by flattening the cornea, we should be able to deliver better vision. At this point, most of the suturing has been completed. Of course, all knots would be buried. And to conclude the case, we remove the stabilization ring and place ointment on the surface of the eye. Again, this is a very rewarding technique as it avoids the issues of endothelial rejection and allows patients to get off drops much earlier. Thank you for your attention.